everybody, and welcome to episode 8 of my Java game tutorial series. In the last episode, we got collision done, which is quite amazing. Now we have collision detection, but now we're going to assess a new issue that has arisen. As you can see, the movement is not that good. It's not smooth, and every time we press a new direction, it does it once, and then it starts going faster. So in this episode, we are going to fix that. So, why is this problem here? Like, why is it doing the movement thing? You see, if we press D, every single time look, the key is pressed, every time the system says, okay, the key's pressed, you can do this now, then it moves it. But there's one little problem with that. See, when we press down D, it does it once, pauses, and then it continuously does it. So how are we going to fix that? We need to make sure it, it's moving every single time in the tick method. So the way we're going to do this is we need to open our player class and our key manager class. These are the two classes we are going to be using this episode. So what we're going to need in the player class is we're going to need two more static ints. So a public static int dx and a public static int dy so direction x and direction y every time we tick before we set the bounds of the rectangle which will make collision detection easier we want to do x plus equals direction x and y plus equals direction y there we go so now on the key manager we're gonna have to edit our code here instead of changing the new y what we're going to do is we're going to set the player dot d y and we're going to copy that down to the third one where it hits where every time you press x and then we're also going to copy that into the new x the new x's and instead of dy it needs to be dx and there we go so now what we have to do is we have to reverse these. So this is minus equals now, minus equals, and plus equals, and plus equals. There we go. Now, every time we press a key, we have to make sure we set the player.dx and the player.dy back equal to zero. If not, it will just add it every time we press to the mouse, and it will get going so fast that you won't even be able to see the player after a few clicks. So. I'm going to do player dot dx equals zero at the very beginning and player dot dy equal to zero too. Now, when we release the key, it's not going to do anything right now. Because before, every time the key pressed, it moves, and that's all we had to worry about. Now we have to make sure that when we're not pressing the mouse anymore, it sets them to zero, or the keys anymore. So, we have to copy that down to key released, and we're going to set it equal to zero. So we can just change the twos. Oh, the twos equal to zero. There we go. And we have to make sure we don't add or subtract it, we just make it equal zero. So now if we run that, our movement is much, much smoother. So now we have another problem. Collision detection. Uh, collision detection does not work anymore. Now, why is this? That's because we're moving it even when it doesn't check for collision. Because it checks for collision in the key manager every time we press the mouse. So, in theory, collision detection still works. It just does not get called enough to be effective. So, we have to move the collision detection to the player class. Simple enough. Alright, so let's get doing that. We can remove the new x and the new y from the key pressed, and we can also remove can move. We don't need that stuff anymore. Now, we want to copy this code, cut it actually, control x, and we want to paste it into our player class just after the tick. We want to comment out the very beginning movement because that will wreck it, and we also want to create a new boolean. Boolean can move. Can move, 
And we want to make sure we set can move equal to true at every time we tick. So now, every time we change the new x, we don't want that anymore. So we have to create the integers up here now. So int new x, int new y. Now we don't have to do this, it is just a lot more productive. So what we're going to make new x equal to is we're going to set it equal to direction x. Actually, we don't even need these. It's, it's just an extra bit of code. So we can just set this to dx, this one to dy. There we go. And here we just set this to dx and dy. Believe it or not, now we have our fixed collision detection and our movement is a lot smoother. So let's go ahead and launch and let's move the frame down. Um, <laughs> it's harder than you think. There we go. And now our movement is reversed but everything works. So we can just reverse it back by changing these again. Now, I don't know why it does that. You don't, I, I don't have to, and you don't have to. But pretty much, as soon as we had the collision detection, it is that way again. So it worked before, but it's, when we added the collision detection again, it didn't work anymore. So there we go. Now we have to make sure we launch a version of this where we are not inside of a block, and believe me, in a few episodes we will fix it so it does not generate a block inside the player. So that is it for this episode. In this episode, we got smoother movement done as well as then fixing the collision detection to work with our new movement. So movement looks a lot a lot better now. I don't know what we will do we will be doing in the next episode, probably a chunk rendering system to make everything more productive and easier to run because right now we are just rendering every block no matter what. So we might want to fix that. But anyways, thank you everybody for watching this episode of my Java game tutorial. And I will see you all in the next episode.